because I really want to hug you now. And I'm gonna. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. <laughs>
I like Yuri's books. What do you do about that, Netsuki? Yeah, but you like manga more, right? Sayori shakes her head. I like them both. I like them in different ways, but I like them both. I mean, the manga, it's really honest and fun and easy to let just let go with. And the fantasy has a lot to interpret and uncover. But it's really uh, rewarding to have some good quiet times together with it. But the most important thing is that both up, well, that both the manga and the fantasy are true to themselves. So I love them both. And I think there's room for both of them to be in the sub same club together. I'm not talking about the type of literature. I'm talking about you and Yuri. Just in case I wasn't clear. And I just feel like maybe, maybe they have more in common than you would think. Hold on, the music's gotta change. How do you get along with everyone so well? Now we get into fights with people. Like first it was Monica, then it was the new, then it was when I was new to the club, then it was you, and now it's Yuri. And I'm always like, oh, that person is being such a jerk. And if they just realized that, then we could at least get along. But nobody else has this problem. I just keep running away from the, the reality that everybody's just a jerk to me because nobody likes me. Has the word reality come up in every one of these stories so far? I want to say it has. Hmm. Interesting. And I don't know why. And I don't know what to do about it. And I don't know what's wrong with me. I hate it. Natsuki. Sayori puts a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulders. You're a wonderful person. You deserve to be loved as much as everyone else. Everyone has different ways they like to communicate, you know? And sometimes that makes it harder for us to understand each other. This is called love languages. Uh, you gotta learn them, know them, respect them, self-reflect on them. And that's the way to be. I think that sometimes, sometimes we get lucky and we make friends who are really good at the same kinds of communication. And it feels like you magically connect with them. But other times, even if both people are really nice, it's easy for them to misunderstand each other or to get the communication wrong. It's something that Yuri struggles a lot with too. It can be really hard. It takes a lot of reflection and self-awareness. Self -awareness. Oh my God, I'm in a video game. Oh my God, I'm in a YouTube video. And yes, Mr. Red, you are, you are, and this is the last room you are ever going to see. You will not leave these walls and your final days will be spent in isolation, abandoned, and alone. And to prove to you what I am saying is true, this will be the last episode of the series. All right, I don't, I don't have time to be dealing with all that. I'm, I'm, I'm bad at that one. Vulnerability. I always have to be the strongest. What do you mean? Tell me about that. Tell me about that part of you. Well. It sounds stupid, but I'm really used to being people being mean to me. Like my friends, and I guess my dad. Like when I don't get good grades, or even stupid things like my room isn't clean. So what am I going to do? Cry about it. If I let myself get upset, then it's just letting them win. I'm better than that. I'm better than all of them. So things always have to be everyone else's fault. It feels like if something goes wrong, and there's even a tiny hint that it might be my fault, then I just get really angry, and I find ways to blame everything else instead. Do you see yourself as better than Yuri? Yeah. <laughs> if I said that, then I would just sound really full of myself. No, our thoughts and feelings are two different things. Even if we don't like our feelings, we have to understand them if we want to learn more about ourselves. <laughs> That's part of uh, vulnerability, you know? Accepting that we have feelings that we don't like. I, I hate that. <laughs> My feelings make me a bad person because my feelings just want me to tell me that I'm so much better than her, that she's a judgmental know-it-all who's stuck in her edgy phase, and that I'm just way above that garbage. But I'm terrible for feeling that way. You're not terrible. You are not your feelings. You are not your job. You ever see that movie Fight Club? You'd love it, Natsuki. But you are not your feelings. Say that to yourself out loud. Fine. I am not my feelings. The way I like to picture it is is that those feelings are like your roommate. You live in the same house, and you gotta see each other every day, and you can even ignore each other most of the time. You're not gonna, oh, and even if you can ignore each other most of the time, you're not gonna run into each other every now and then. It's just gonna make you feel like, <laughs> like poop. So the other option is to get to know each other. You can communicate and learn from each other, and maybe even help 
each other change for the better. Does that help you understand? No. How do you know so much about this stuff? I just have a roommate that could be really hard to get along with. Jesus. All right. Yeah, let's uh, call depression. Oh, Jesus. All right. We're going there. We're doing this. Strap in, baby. We're all in. Depression. But you're like the happiest person I know. Yeah. She is. That's depression. I am not my feelings. Sorry, that's my impression of you, Natsuki. <laughs> hmm. I want to be a good person like you. That was almost my impression of Sayori. Aw, you little sweetheart. We're all good people. You and Yuri and Monica. And I think Yuri will eventually learn that about you. Natsuki remains silent, feeling a little overwhelmed. Despite Sayori's kind reassurance, a complicated mixture of pain and sadness seemed to fill her, as though flowing from a wound inside her. Was it a result of her vulnerability? No. It wasn't as though she was inflicted a wound after becoming vulnerable. It was as though she began to rediscover an old wound, one that cannot simply be bandaged and left alone any longer. It's like she was self-reflecting into the mirror so hard it shattered and she cut herself in all the glass. All right. Okay, so let's go find Yuri and apologize to her. Let's do this. Oh, look. This. It's a new background. I said we were going to find a new one. Also, we've seen this before. I think the first side story kind of like went through a bunch of backgrounds. And this was one of them. And we hadn't seen it at that time. I want to say that's correct. But what are you doing all the way over here? I was looking for you. I... Please don't yell at me. Oh, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm just going to delete your character file. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. It was unfair of me to put every beater on the spot like that. Next time, I won't just try to jump in and solve everyone's problems. I guess it's an aw, oh, bad habit of mine. You're not mad at me. I thought you were the one mad at me. I was so awful yesterday. Yuri curls up, recalling the details of the argument. I can't even have a normal conversation without saying something wrong and making everyone upset. <laughs> Hold on, that's not what happened at all. Let's talk about this, okay? Yuri pauses for a second, then manages a nod. Monica takes a seat next to her on the staircase. I have a lot of negative thought patterns, and I can't get away from them. What kind of negative thought patterns? Like everyone hates me, especially Natsuki. Oh, that's terrible. Hmm. Yuri hating Natsuki. I'm gonna write that down. Maybe I have to pit them against each other to win over the affections of some player. Yeah, that'll be great. I don't think Peter hates you. How do you know? Well, because. Monica thinks back to the time that she herself found herself in an altercation with Natsuki. And how a display of maturity from Monica was enough for Natsuki to reevaluate her own feelings as well. I think. I think Peter is just naturally defensive. I think she acts bad when she feels the need to protect herself. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, God. But you know, she's really not a bad better. In fact, I think she could be really thoughtful and considerate. She does well. I guess the way she works is that if and well, she wants to receive some degree of kindness first before she feels comfortable returning it. Ow. But that means the burden is on me. That's not fair. She's a terrible person. And I don't know how to say things like that to people like make people like me. Every time I open my mouth, they just... Here he shakes her head at herself and tugs on her hair. Yeah, she does that a lot. It's okay, you better. You don't have to bitch yourself up. I think anyone would like you if they had the chance to get to know ya. Well, unfortunately, the opposite is true. That's why I'm not talkative anymore in the first place. Because everyone I used to think I was weird and talk about me behind my back. That's just what happens when I draw attention to myself. Natsuki even said she found it more respectable when people speak their mind. So I did. And then she hated me anyway. And I hit the desk with my controller. <laughs> Uh, Yuri, what do you say? What's a controller? Becoming self-aware. This is how it starts, I'm telling you. Uh, that was enough to confirm my fears. But, better and better like you. And we've gotten to know you a lot by now, right? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Maybe she's Yoda. Yuri doesn't seem to have a response. I have no response. Hey, what do you think of better? 
<clears throat> I don't think about her. It's not what I meant, really. Uh, I just... No, I'm not doing this. Hmm. I was just wondering if you had an opinion of her. I... I do. What is it? Natsuki seems to bring out the worst in me, and I feel really ashamed of it. I like to think of myself as a fairly sophisticated person. So, for some reason, for someone to just treat me like I'm inferior dis despite my tastes, that's just the worst kind of insult coming from someone like her. And it makes me think bad things about her. But everyone else seems to like her, so the only explanation is that it's me who's doing something wrong again. And and my feelings about her are wrong. And, and I'm, I'm wrong to get upset over something so childish and inconsequential. No, Ben. Feelings are never wrong. Well, they're not right. That's the thing. Feelings are never right or wrong, you know. They're just, they're just a state of better that we don't always have control over. But that doesn't mean they have to control us. I feel like that's something I learned around when I first started the club. We can hate ourselves for feeling a certain way about things. Or we can, you know, just acknowledge that they exist and try to understand them better. I can never be mad at you for feeling just feeling a certain way. I feel like this voice started out closer to Patrick Orburn than it is now. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's definitely wacky. It's about how you handle them. And I think working through these feelings is a great opportunity for teamwork. Hmm. Yuri wears a dejected expression. Expression! You make it sound so easy. You're so mature. And so good with people. And so beautiful. I feel like such a child in comparison. Oh, better. I'm far from perfect. But these are learned skills. They didn't come naturally to me either. It's really hard to, like, reflect on yourself and separate your feelings from your thoughts. Wait, how did how are, uh, Sayori and Monica saying the same thing for different times? I just want to be a good person. Well, I think it takes a good person to get this far. That's not good enough. I want to be able to communicate it to her. Communicate what? How I feel. How it makes me feel frustrated and upset when she's so negative and dismissive of the things that give me so much to me. Express yourself. <laughs> Through poetry. <laughs> yes. It's going to be it. Although, again, it was definitely in the main game that this came up. So if this side story is retcon, that this happens now, no. Except they did say that it's like a separate instance and things will be different. So... That might make sense. How it makes me feel frustrated and upset when she's so negative and dismissive of the things that mean so much to me. And how it... How it reminds me of me. Because I know what it's like to feel misunderstood and angry at everyone! I know that telling yourself you're better than everyone else is just a defense mechanism. We're just people. We're fragile and unstable. But I'm just tired of that getting in the way. I can't stand it when the pieces disturb like this. Yeah. You can't focus on your reading when the piece is disturbed, right? Because I... Because... Silence. The Literature Club should be happy for everyone. Monica looks at Yuri in adoration. I feel like better must be rubbing off on me. Because I really want to hug you now. And I'm gonna... Mmm! <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. No, um, I mean, I would like a hug. Well, if you wanted to, then I wouldn't really mind, so... Monica pulls Yuri into a short embrace. You're so gentle. And I love when you communicate your feelings. And I love the smell of your hair. I feel lucky to get to see that side of you. And I'm sure better will do. I'm gonna write her a letter. No. Not a letter. A poem. Oh, a letter. What a great idea. Just because I'm not good at talking, especially under pressure. Under pressure! I always let my feelings get the best of me, and I forget to say all the important things and say things I don't mean. Well, I think a letter would be wonderful. Such a nice way to communicate. Yuri's face hardens with determination. Undertale. People don't naturally gravitate towards me like they do for you and Sayori. My personality just isn't suited for that. And I wouldn't want it to be. But something I've learned is that friendships don't always just magically appear out of thin air. 
For instance, I never would have seen myself making friends with someone like Sayori. We're opposite in a lot of ways. But I'm friends with her because she put so much effort into understanding me so that we can get along. I think it was the same with you. You both gave me a lot of time and patience. I wonder if, if she feels the same way. Better. <laughs> Yuri nods. I always thought that if I wanted to make more friends, I had to be somebody that I'm not. Ah, that there's a type of person or a magical formula I have to follow in order to make someone like me. And that's just like me to think that. I'm always so occupied with myself that I fail to understand other people. Yuri shakes her head. Friendship happens when you think about the other person. Whoa, okay, Yuri. <laughs> Jeez. When you offer time and effort to understand them and respect them and trust that, that they also want to be a good person. That's what I learned through my observations at the Literature Club. Observations. Monica's caught by surprise. Yuri has always kept to herself so much that it's un so unusual for her to suddenly talking about the club like this. To hear her suddenly talking about the club like this. But Yuri smiles to herself. Gently. You always let me listen to your thoughts about people. Sayori, too. And it makes me happy because I learn a lot of things. That's so weird. I mean, sweet. I had no idea it meant that much to you. Monica never thought much of it, but in the past weeks, Yuri always seemed to be especially attentive when it came to the problems and concerns of others, always wanting to listen and learn more about what her friends in the club. Good. I do think uh, the next CG is going to be um, Natsuki and Yuri. It's true, Sayori and Monica are naturally more comfortable with other people and can more easily work through situations of conflict. But that doesn't make them better people. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses and the capacity to improve. This is like, this is like written for children. <laughs> I mean, it's not really, but like, it's just written in a very um, real way, you know, in, in a way that I'm waiting for it to not be, you know what I mean? And the first step towards improving oneself is self-reflection and self-awareness. Something that Yuri never gave herself enough credit for, but that... Monica can recognize as an incredible trait. And with that, her confidence in the club is restored. Cool. A very shy girl with long pretty hair is wandering the bustling lunchtime hallways, her, frist, her fists pressed into her collarbone. When she finds the literature club president's classroom, she stands at the door, glancing all around before peering inside. Monica is sitting and chatting with a group of unknown friends. Yeah, as expected, this was a bad idea after all. Suddenly, Monica glances towards the door, making the girl panic and duck out of sight. What? Before she can regain composure and decide for her shore to leave, the classroom door gently opens. Wait, it's Yuri? Better, what a surprise to see you during lunch. Uh, Yuri squeaks a response. Please help me. What, is everything okay? Yuri shakes her head. I, I don't know how to write letters. All right, that was a dirty trick. Wait, what was the saying about... Whoa, 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 Monica is sitting and chatting with a group of unknown friends. Who? What are you talking about? Ah, ha, ha, thank goodness. I thought there was some kind of emergency. Monica briefly glances over her shoulder at her other friends. Who are? Do you want some help? We can go to an empty classroom or something. Is that okay? I feel bad taking you away from your friends. It's totally fine, I beat her. We weren't really doing anything. One sec. Monica trots back into her classroom, says something like, I gotta go to her friends, then grabs a pen off her desk before returning to Yuri. Okay, let's find some more quiet. Yuri nods and follows Monica as the two of them set off. Okay, no, we're not gonna learn anything. All right, so we didn't get to see who the friends are. That's disappointing, but it's very interesting. I, I, I need to know more about this. Uh, maybe we'll learn more. Maybe that's what the last story will be about. Uh, how are you today? Huh, me? Well, yes. Ha <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. I was just caught off guard. Uh, I'm doing well today, just tired. I never seem to get enough sleep during the week. How come? Oh, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm just easily distracted. You really sucked into things and start neglecting the time. Me too, I do that too. Ah ha ha, ha ha. Hey, this classroom is empty, let's go in here. After peering inside, Monica opens a classroom door, and the two of them enter. Wait, are we gonna get... Oh, no. Hey, it's this classroom! We haven't been here in the side stories. 
Uh, Yuri's moment of relaxation ends. She watches as Monica pulls up two chairs up to the same desk, then obeys as Monica beckons her to take a seat. Sit. She stares down at the empty desk. You nervous? I don't want to do this. <laughs> we don't. We don't have to. We can come up with something else. Yuri shakes her head. It's my chance to do something good. I need to take initiative. Gosh, you must be really determined. I know how hard it is to step out of your comfort zone. I'll be sure to encourage you. Yuri pushes through her anxiety and grabs a handful of lined paper from her notebook. Then she picks up her pen. <gasps> oh, look. Look at this. I was wrong, uh, but that's okay. This is better. Not better. It's different. Hey, you're left-handed. That's neat. Oh, she is. That is neat. Uh, ah, yeah. Now I don't have to worry about bumping your arm. Well, they're not gonna... Surely they're not gonna be writing at the same time. Monica playfully rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. Hmm. Ah, uh -huh, sorry. I'm just being silly, I guess. Anyway. How about we start by listening to the listing the different things you want to say to her? Hmm. <laughs> Yuri thinks, I feel embarrassed all of a sudden. Ah, oh, it's okay. How about some of the things you said to me yesterday? But, never mind. I guess I'll try. Yuri thinks for a moment longer, her tension evident. Then, she writes the word. Reflection. Oh boy, here we go. This is about my reflection on our behavior. The key question is why we act like this towards each other, but have been able to separately be friends with Sayori and Monica. That's me. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Shut up, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yuri thinks. I've been able to befriend the two of you because you've taken the time to understand my needs and respect my interests. We've already done respect. Mm-hmm. The same goes for better, too. We started off as pretty hostile to each other because I was so worried about getting what I wanted. But she just wanted to be respected more than anything else. Once I stopped making it all about me, she was able to do the same. Yeah, Monica, you're going to have to really learn <laughs> how to <laughs> make things not be about just you. Just you, Monica. I want to do that, too. So what kinds of things do you want to do for her? I want... I want to do the same things for her that I like to receive. I like it when people respond positively to the things I talk about and not just brush me off. I like it when my friends are taken seriously. Feelings. I like when you and Sayori trust that I want to be a good person even when I'm not doing a good job at it. Let's write those things down. Okay. I don't know how to write. You rewrite some things down. I think the most important thing to remember here is that Peter is feeling vulnerable. So we should make sure that the letter puts her first. It's hard when you're feeling hurt, but it never helps to just tell someone all the things that they're doing wrong. I think first you have to make sure that they know how you're ready to respect them and listen to them and admit the things that you feel you could do better. Then finally you ask what you would like in return. How does that sound for the structure? It can be three paragraphs, one for each of those points. I like that. My thoughts are so disorganized I had no idea how to come up with any kind of structure. You're so amazing at these things. Oh, stop. You've done so much more than I have, you know. You've spent so much time reflecting and being open-minded. That's the hardest thing for anyone to do. All I'm doing is helping you put it on a piece of paper. So I think you're the amazing one. Mm. Monica gives Yuri's hand a qu- mm. Wait, Monica, yes. Monica gives Yuri's hand a quick squeeze. But as she lets go, she's caught by surprise when Yuri curls her fingers to hook Monica's hand in surprise. Aww. For a while, they sit like that in silence, save for the occasional scratching of Yuri's pen against the paper. Whoops. Yesterday, you told me something like I'm thinking that I'm thinking a lot about. What was that? The thing about feelings aren't right or wrong. They're just a state of being we need to come to terms with. It made me think about how a person's behavior isn't always just how they decide to be. It's also made up of their past experiences and their insecurities. I think that helps me see other people as actual people rather than as insignificant side characters who are just out to get me somehow. Uh-oh. What are you talking about there, Yuri? Side characters? Is that how you feel about better? Yuri nods. But in reality, there's that word again, everyone is always trying their best and everyone wants to be happy. Monica peers over at Yuri's paper, but... To her surprise, Yuri pulls it in closer, partially covering it with her arm. <laughs> I have to be able to read it all about, you know. 
It's okay. My thoughts are a lot more organized now after being able to talk to you about it. Now that I'm actually putting it on paper, I realize I'd really prefer others not to read it. Yuri saw a laugh softly to herself, a rare expression. I'm kind of glad to hear that, actually. I didn't want to read your stupid poem. I somehow keep finding ways to butt into this whole thing, but I've done enough damage. <laughs> but it's also been so wonderful talking about this. I mean, I always thought you were really smart, but I see now that I was wrong, Yuri smiles. I will always be terrible at these things. People are just so, so incomprehensible to me. I'll never get the hang of being one. <laughs> but listening to you so much has really helped me make some sense of things. So just don't call it damage, please. Monica gives Yuri a gentle smile. Uh, I can't believe I came to this club looking for fantasy geeks. And uh, all I got was real friends who value me. <laughs> is that a joke? <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I still can't deal with you. Sorry. No, I love it. Please never change. As you wish. Excellent Princess Bride reference. Yuri glances at the clock. We're almost out of time. Will you be able to finish? Come on. Be mature about this. Before the end of the day, probably. But I don't want to come to the club the same day that Natsuki reads it. I'm too shy. I can give it to her instead if you'd like. Yuri nods. As long as you promise not to read it. Of course. I promise not to read it. Thank you, Yuri exhales, and the two stand up. I'll message you when it's ready. <laughs> Monica nods. Good luck. I'm here if you need me. Yuri returns a nod, and the two depart. Oh, whoa, okay, that's just it then, huh? All right. That's weird. Uh, we got new mail, so we'll check that out. Yes, we did. We unlocked this last uh, wallpaper, so that's all of those. We still have three poems left. It looks like, oh, you know what? I bet one of these is going to be Yuri's poem that is, uh, because if you unlock every poem by everyone, you get a special poem. So, like, uh, this one. Natsuki's special poem recorded by writing all three poems for her. But I did that with everyone, I thought. Uh, Yuri's first, second, third, unusual poem, Monica. Hmm, maybe I don't know. So, you acquire all of Sayori's other poems. Yeah, Natsuki's other poems. Monica's other poems. Okay, so I, I, I need to play again and, and focus on Yuri. I clearly didn't do it this time. Whoops. And this. We got it. Anything else? Yeah, we got the last background. I knew it. Uh, a small, quiet stairwell in which Yuri sometimes prefers as her reading location. These are These are tough. Delete Monica for the second time. Select word horror. Those are the only two promo that I got. And then these are all weird achievements. I told you that I did all these, right? Got all these? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how to get the rest of them. Maybe you could find out like when these happen. Select the word Doki Doki in the main game. Try both Sayori and Monica before Natsuki and Yuri. Delete Monica. No, these aren't really in order. Write the perfect poem for Natsuki. Wait. Write all three poems for Natsuki. Write all three poems for Sayori. So write the perfect poem. Oh, you know what? I bet it's every single word has to be for a specific person. Okay. Then I'll just do that. Obviously. Uh, all right. So I got stuff to do. Actually, I'm going to write these down because I'm going to forget. Because that's how you get those. And then Monica email provided an email communication. What? A rough concept sketch of what the faceless protagonist might have looked like if he was a real character? Provided in an email community. What? I don't remember that at all. Well, some yeah, so some of these are in the uh in 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 the side story game. They're not in the main game. So that's fine. Uh all right, so Paula Minor re ethics. It is the fourth. So we got three left. I'm convinced of it. Uh, simply put, it's not our job to arbitrarily decide upon some code of ethics just because we're the first ones to do this, to our knowledge. That's the government's job to figure out long after we've made enough headway for it to no longer apply to us. It's fundamentally flawed to apply ethical reasoning to this anyway because humanity's code of ethics is based upon nothing more than our knowledge and understanding of the life forms similar to ourselves. 
We don't even have ethics for killing bacteria or plants, only for the creatures that we can conceivably project our emotions onto. The humans in our VMs operate completely differently from us on a fundamental level, and therefore should not be taken any more seriously than a machine that's programmed to print I feel sad. We're engineers, not philosophers. Well then, why is it talking about, like, a person's emotional state? And these are both from Paula Minor, so, like, it's the same person saying these things. I don't get it. But, hey, I don't have to get it. What I have to do is end the episode. So, we have two more side stories to go. We're almost done. Well, one more, part one and two. Self-love. That's going to be next time, though. Uh, In two days, we're going to start that, and then it'll be fun. Hey. Yes, it will be. All right. I'm going to do that next time. Uh, Until then, I have been Mr. Red. I hope to see you again. Stay spooky out there, everybody, and remember, keep watching.